Schrock Innovations presents Nebraska's number one independent computer repair company with offices in Omaha and Lincoln. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program this morning. And, of course, if you ask a question, make a comment, we'll put you in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate that we draw for here at the end of the program. Uh, we don't talk a whole lot about this, but, you know, another viable way that you can reach the program and get included in the drawing is if you email the program, Thor, T-H-O-R, at SchrockInnovations.com. Now, I'm going to start doing this every Sunday. I don't know what it is. Every night when I go to sleep, so we're talking anywhere between 11 and 12.30, you know, in the morning, somewhere in that neighborhood, I lay my head on the pillow. I set my phone on the nightstand. My eyes are closing. I can't read any more news about French elections, you know. Will the populace win? Will the populace wave be destroyed? Or will the unpopular kids finally win one? Yeah, I, I don't know, whatever. So I set my phone down, and it's like, bzz, bzz, bzz. it buzzes. Now, I have a do not disturb set. So, I, you know, I don't get texts in the middle of the night. And I pick up my phone because I'm like, oh, I was just about to go to sleep. And it's Facebook. No joke, Facebook. Every single night. Right, It's like it knows when I'm going to bed. And it buzzes me right when I'm falling asleep to tell me, you need to do more with your page. It's like, what, are you trying to guilt trip me as I sleep? Is this like part of a subliminal advertising program? I don't understand. And then every morning when I come in to do the radio show on Sunday morning and I sit in front of this microphone and I say the words, three service centers, Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, and I look up and I say, and you can email the program. And I look up to make sure my email is open and there's an email from Sleep Number. Coincidence? I think not. I think they're working together. Facebook keeps me up. Sleep number says, you need a new bed. I I'm just saying, you do you feel tired lately? Maybe you need a new bed. And maybe Facebook's texting me in the middle of the night, and that's why I'm tired. My goodness. No, actually, uh, last night was a really great text. If you're going to text me in the middle of the night from Facebook, well, and it's not even a, it's not even a person texting me. It's Facebook, the automated system, sending me a notification. So it's not even like a person's like, hey, Thor, please, please, please help me. It's, bzz, bzz, bzz. you got a five-star review, which is great. I, that, that's awesome. Five-star review. Wow, that's awesome. But you could have told me in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah, we did get a five-star review for the Data Recovery Lab over in the Omaha Service Center. Uh, we had a customer who, uh, who flies back and forth to Raleigh every week, and she had a really nice Asus laptop. We're talking a beautiful unit. It was six months old. And the solid-state hard drive inside the unit had started to fail. Now, there are two hard drives inside the computer. There was a rotating disk hard drive and a solid-state. The rotating disk hard drive should have been set up as a backup, but it wasn't. Um, so the solid-state was kind of just flying solo, and it died. Solid-state hard drives can fail. And so it failed. We put it in the data recovery lab. She took it to a couple other places in town. They couldn't get any information off of it. You know, and it's not there. I'm not – when I say it like that, I didn't say the names of the places because it's, it's not important, I guess. But – they just don't have the right equipment to do it, and it's not a knock on their skills, their abilities. You know, other places in town have great technicians. Sometimes, you know, you're just – sometimes you just have to have the right tool for the job. My son, the other day, so proud of him. He, his, his Nintendo 3DS, his right shoulder button stopped working. And so finally, after like a year of putting up with it, he just decided one morning he was going to take that sucker apart, and he was going to fix it. And so and he has no idea what he's doing. I love it. He had no idea what he's doing. He's going to take it apart and fix it. So he gets a screwdriver. Right? He starts taking the screws out, except we don't have the right screwdriver. And so he's, you know, turning it, turning it, and trying to make it work. And, you know, Dad, can you help me? And I get, like, four more screws out than should come out because I'm like, hey, Father's Day gift idea. Ding-a-ling. Need a new screwdriver set. I need a new precision screwdriver set for home because you know what happens is in the shop they're like, oh, my gosh, Thor, we lost the blah, blah, blah tip, you know, for our driver set. Do you have one you can bring by? We have a job. We got to get done today. Oh, yeah, I think I got one here at the house. I'll grab it and take it. And, you know, I get I'm, – finally I'm trying to open, a, you know, something at home and I have no tips. You know, <laughs> where are my tips? And I call the shops and they don't have them anymore. It's amazing where those things go. Um, so nevertheless, you know, he gets it all taken apart. We get the, shoulder, the right shoulder button on Amazon for like six bucks. We put the little button and the ribbon in and everything and put it all back together, and he's playing his DS. So proud of him. It's awesome. So, you know, th those are the fun things, the fun things that I do on the weekend. So Facebook sends me this review, 
And I'm just like, wow, this is this is crazy because you know other places in town just didn't have the right tool to do the job. We did. Now we had to. We took her hard drive six days to image. Six days. It was that slow. But we got every single sector on her recovery. Got her her data back. She was, she flies into Omaha. She lives in Omaha on the weekends and then flies to Raleigh for work. So she flew into Omaha, landed, brought in a hard drive. Said, "Hey, I'm going to be in town for literally like 24 hours more. Can you get my data on this drive?" We dumped it over to the drive, got her back out the door. And uh, by the way, I remember I said her computer was only six months old. Well, we're taking care of all of the, the returning of the computer for her. That's one of the things that we do at Schrock. If you have a computer that is under warranty, uh, whether it's under warranty with Dell or HP or, in this case, Asus or anybody, you can drop it off in our service center and free of charge we'll manage your return for you. There's a couple of reasons we do this. Number one, you know, we are not authorized by anybody to do anything. We are not HP authorized. We are not Dell authorized. We're, we're, we're kind of like the computer pirates. Arr, we're not authorized to do nothing, matey. And there's a reason for that. Now, I have the applications. I mean, HP asked us to be an HP reseller. Asus, we're not actually an Asus reseller. Do you know that? We sell more Asus's than anyone in Nebraska, but we're not an Asus reseller to officially. Because to be an Asus reseller or an HP reseller, Numero uno, you can't have your own house branded computers. You can't sell modular PCs. We'd have to ditch the modular computers. I don't want to do that. Number two, you have to follow the rules. And, you know, rules, rules are very, very important in society <coughs> for other people. Um, and they, uh, they really make sure that, that everything, everybody knows what to expect from everyone else <coughs> from other people. Um, and so it's really important that <coughs> other people always follow the rules, right? You know, so we all have to, well, most of us have to follow the rules. So here's the rules. Number one, you get an Asus computer with a bad solid state hard drive. And the solid state hard drive is good enough that the computer will boot occasionally, but not stable enough that you can run and actually use the computer. Asus says, just like HP says, just like Dell says, that hard drive is not, it does not warrant a warranty replacement at this time. Yes, it's functional enough. It passed our internal diagnostic test. I don't understand why you're having a problem. Have you tried running a factory restore at this point? Ah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, uh, factory restore on a bad hard drive. You know, your tire's flat. Have you tried, like, changing your oil or, you know, something else that will have absolutely no consequence on, you know, what you're doing whatsoever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I'll try that. I'll try that. Thank you. Um, so, you know, we get the data off the drive, and then, boy, you know, something, something really weird happened, and there was some kind of strange electrical, you know, it was crazy, and then the drive doesn't work at all. But luckily, we just finished getting the data off the drive before it and died. It was, it, was, it was just brilliant. I mean, it was amazing. Amazing luck, actually. Um, but now, guess what? The drive doesn't pass Asus's internal hardware diagnostic anymore. Therefore, it is covered by a warranty replacement. We put it in a box. We send it to Asus. Asus will take a week, fix it, send it back to us, which, of course, is ridiculous. Now, when I say take a week, it's going to be gone for two weeks. We're going to send them the computer. They're going to – switching the hard drive takes an hour or less. Just end it. Click, click. There you go. And then they send it back. But it's going to take a week, and they'll send it back to us. And then we're going to take all of her information, and we're going to dump it all back onto her computer again. And then the next weekend when she flies into town, she'll be able to come in and pick up her beautiful Asus laptop with its two hard drives with an internal backup this time. Yay. So that'll be that'll be good. So that's the kind of stuff we do over at Truck. You know, it's – it's different than what you're going to get at a lot of other places in town. You know, last week we talked a little bit about uh, computer habit. And if you missed the show last week, uh, computer habit is a uh, – or was a computer store in La Vista. Um, and they were – they've been around for a long time. They were op owned by a couple, uh, kind of a mom-and-pop repair shop. Uh, they sold their repair shop to another party at some point. They retired, something along those lines. And the other gentleman that was, that was doing the business was – well, there was some – I, I gotta be careful. I don't want to get you know say anything that's not accurate, but to put it mildly, there were some shenanigans, and you can you can jump on to uh, let's see. Good morning, good morning. Static charge. Thomas Morrison says static. Oh, static charge. I was like, I thought you guys were talking. I'm, I'm looking at Facebook.com/slash Rock Innovations. I apologize. Tangent here. This is why I don't have a producer, guys. I'm doing all this live myself on the air, and I'm looking at uh, what's going on on the Facebook page to make sure my audio is great. 
Audio and video, great today, Winston says. Winston is the unofficial AV technician for Compute This. So thank you, Winston, for being on top of it, even though uh, here we are 12 minutes in the program and I'm just now checking to make sure the audio is working. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, Jody says good morning. Thomas says good morning. And uh, blowing the hard drive. That's right, Thomas. I, I, I caught on right at the static charge. I thought first I thought you meant there was like some static in the audio. Like, zzz, and I'm like, oh, I got to – my leg – there's cables all around my legs. So I have to like stand really still or sit really still so I don't knock the cables. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so – that's what we do at Truck, and it's a little bit different because over at Computer Habit, there were some shenanigans going on. Uh, customers were actually giving the owner of the company blank checks for, for future services, um, and it didn't end well. And uh, it ended with the owner being in jail. Um, so maybe it did end well, depending on your perspective. But uh, the bottom line is you know, we announced last week that we're going to be honoring any outstanding warranties or, um, or service contracts that Computer Habit had. All you have to do is come into one of our service centers with your computer habit paperwork, tell us what you what you paid for, basically, what you've got, and then we're going to go ahead and honor that for you. Um, and it's not because we have some special relationship. You know, I haven't been to uh, you know the, the, the jail to go <laughs> visit the owner of computer habit. I don't know the guy. I don't know anything about I didn't even know computer. This happened in February, apparently. And, you know, I'm pretty in touch in the local industry. I try to keep tabs on everybody, you know. And they're not all like, you know, frenemies. Some of them are really good guys, you know. So I, we try to keep in touch a little bit. Just had a buddy of mine who had a three-year anniversary for a computer repair shop. And, you know, he's not local. But, uh, you know, so I try to keep up on, on people in the industry. So for me, not knowing about this since February, whoa, like craziness. Um, so, you know, we just decided, hey, we're going to help these people out. It's the same thing we did with DIT. It's the same thing we did with ARN Networks when it closed. You know, we're going to help these people out and honor these warranties. Well, uh, actually... We talked about that last week on the radio show, also on uh, KMTV Channel 3 for the Omaha Morning Blend. And uh, lo and behold, we got nominated for a Better Business Bureau Integrity Award last week. So thank you. I, I don't want to go into who did the nominating. It wasn't us. We didn't nominate ourselves. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that with that award. But we were actually nominated by a legit third party. It was, it was pretty cool um, for doing the right thing, just doing the things that you should do as a business. So – I appreciate that. So, yeah, I got nominated for an Integrity Award, and in the middle of the night, we got a five-star review, <laughs> maybe from an airplane. I don't know. <laughs> so that, that was pretty cool. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program, and if you ask a question or make a comment, we will put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. If you didn't gather by now, you can also actually watch the show online at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations where you can, uh, you can jump on in there. You can post comments on the Facebook page. And uh, in real time, I try to keep up with it because I can't cycle back through. I can only see like the five most recent comments, and it won't let me cycle back in time to see the older ones because it's kind of a, a Facebook Live thing. They're trying to, to capture the moment, you know. So if you click the like button, it, a little thumbs up like rolls past the screen, and uh, it's, it gets kind of funny. You have to watch. If you click it, you can see your little your little like or your your <gasps> shocked face or whatever. You know, go across the screen. It's kind of funny, but uh, nevertheless, you can watch it online. There, you can listen to it as well. And welcome aboard to all of our out of state listeners. Coming up in the next few weeks, we're going to actually be bringing on possibly some other stations outside of the uh, Nebraska area. To, to air compute this every week. Um, so you might notice a few small changes in the program, like maybe a different 800 number, things like that. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You can still call in as always. Uh, but then I'll have to, like, be careful, you know, because, like, can I say Nebraska references if we're, we're airing outside of Nebraska? You know, hmm, I don't know. Like, I, I saw Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend, guys, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. Can I talk about that kind of stuff outside of Nebraska? I don't know. Well, and the good news this week is we have an absolutely quiet week on the security front. Yeah, I mean, there was a whole nine, nine gigabytes of emails and documents stolen from the French presidential candidate guy, Macron or Mac Macron, you know, whatever his name is. Um, you know, he, he, he got hacked. And they're, they're already blaming the Russians. It's like they have no idea, but they're like, it's the Russians, Arr, boogeyman. Kind of funny. But uh, so he got hacked. But I guess in French politics, there's like a two day silent period before a vote. And so none of the candidates can say anything about the emails that were dropped. So I have to think if it's the Russians, they would have known about the two day blackout period. Like the press can't print anything about it. I mean, it's like zzz, blackout. 
you think they the the the, the Russians being the the election manipulating masterminds that they are would have known there's a two day blackout and maybe dropped it the day before, as opposed to the in the two day blackout period, you know when no one can legally cover it, you know hmm that that, that oopsie. So anyway, it it was pretty uh, pretty good stuff I guess. But uh, nine gigabytes of data. Now let me let me put that in perspective. You know my email. I have all my emails going back to like two thousand and you know whatever. I mean it's ridiculous. My my PST file in Outlook is like three gigabytes, and that's all the attachments ever sent back and forth. I get three four attachments a day just from the shops, just reports. You know, so I have tons and tons and tons of stuff in my email PST, and I only have three gigabytes of data. This guy has nine gigabytes of data that were stolen. Nine gigabytes? That's huge. Now, when you think about it, you know, it's like I do have a, a you know, a 1,000 gigabyte hard drive that's half full on my computer. So I suppose if you wanted to take like, let me see. Let me see the oldest document I have on here. I'm going to open up in real time. This is, this is my real computer, guys. I'm going to go to my documents folder. And let's do, oh, boy. What is the oldest thing that I've got? Oh, that's in my OneDrive. OneDrive wasn't around for very long, so I can't use that as a as an example. Let's go into documents. And the oldest document that is Schrock related that I have on my computer, because I, I did go through and kill some stuff a while back to try to clean up the hard drive a little bit. Okay, let's see. This is from 2000 and... Let's see. The ultimate upgrade. Here we go. I have the ultimate upgrade from 2006. Here, this is what the. By the way, we have two of those left. By the way, then they're gone. So the ultimate upgrade in 2006 came with a 200 gigabyte hard drive, 512 megs of RAM, and a single core AMD 64 bit Sempron processor. Yeah, it had a DVD drive and a sound card. Ooh, 64 megabytes of graphics. That's pretty cool. Six USB ports, a serial port, and an LPT printer port. Windows XP. Yeah, you know it. Yep. Starting at four ninety nine. So to put that in perspective, this is 2006 Ultimate Upgrade. The 2017 Ultimate Upgrade, 11 years later, is is $50 cheaper. Comes with a solid-state hard drive. Four gigabytes, so it's 4,000-something megabytes of memory instead of 512. Um, the, the onboard video card is like 512 megabytes of graphics onboard. It's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. So, yeah, things have come a long way. So to have nine gigabytes of data on your computer stolen that are email-related, that's a lot of email. This guy's got a lot, a lot, a lot of email. So good news is aside from his unfortunate situation this week there's not a whole lot of negative security news i don't have the big scary next virus to tell you about your router is not getting hacked by anybody that we know of uh that we know of <clears throat> um all around it's it's a pretty sweet deal this week you know what i'm saying it's uh it, it's nice you know you don't have to worry about much this week um so it's kind of cool we haven't had a week like that in a while so let's have some fun with it today so that what that translates to guys is i don't have a ton of super scary stuff to bring you so i'm going to fill this entire hour with like funny shrock stories things that happen in the service center and the longer i talk the less funny they'll get because you know i kind of prioritize them um some things i think are funny other people don't i can go into that later um you know i'm going to talk about weird stuff today we're going to talk about cool things you can do with your computer one of the things that's really been on my mind lately we're going to talk a little bit on the program today about chip on board technology which sounds incredibly exciting oh chip on board i can't wait i love chips on a board yeah Sounds like something you get at a restaurant. Would you like a board of chips, sir? No, but uh, chip on board is important. And how we, when you're shopping for a new computer, whether you're buying one from Schrock or going somewhere else, because, yes, I know we don't talk about this often, but there are other places you can buy computers on the planet. You know, we don't recommend them, but and I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. I mean, honestly, if people buy computers at the Mart, they buy computers at Best Buy, they buy computers off the internet. So if you're buying a computer and you're talking to somebody, what kind of questions should you ask them to make sure that you're getting a good computer, something that is actually not going to be all chip on board? Because it's getting to the point now where unless you're going to spend eight, 900 bucks on a computer, you can't avoid the chip on board stuff anymore. Uh, we're going to touch on computer maintenance a little bit, see, and, uh, see about all the stuff that, uh, that you can do 
with your computer at home versus the stuff we can do in the service center and why that's so important. And it does kind of dovetail into that chip on board stuff a little bit. So we do have some stuff to cover today on the program. But more importantly, this is a perfect week. For your calls, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. If you ask a question or make a comment, we'll put you in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate uh, here at the end of the program. So we're going to take a quick break here on the show. When we come back, Susan, your call will be first up, coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations has Omaha's only fully equipped data recovery center. Call 934-9423 the next time your hard drive, iPod, camera card, or flash drive stops working and let Schrock get your data back. Welcome to Schrock Innovations. How can I help you today? I'm having a problem with my computer. You're at the right place. We fix problems with computers. And maybe, I don't know. All right. So, guys, how's it going? Welcome on board, everybody from Facebook. Whew, sorry for the commercial break. We're, we're looking at possibly having the show airing on different stations, and some stations will let us have the whole hour, and some stations require us to run commercial spots where they can run commercials in the time that we're already paying for. It makes a lot of sense, I know. So uh, we have to take commercial breaks. So we've try I'm try this one was supposed to be taken at 20 after. It was 23, so I only missed this one by like three minutes, right? What's three minutes? It's no big deal. All right, so we're going to be coming back here. We're going to take another break at the bottom of the hour. Stay tuned on Facebook, and uh, I'll take your questions here live during the uh, commercial break. All righty, guys. Welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. 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 I only say it like every week. Um, we have three locations. Let's see if I can get this right. One in Lincoln, 27th and Pine Lake Road. In Omaha, 168th and Burke. That's Village Point South, right across the street from the Village Point Mall where the rent is slightly cheaper. And in Papillion at 72nd and Highway 370. Now, the place to join us on the show this morning is 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. You can jump in, ask a question, make a comment. We'll put you in the drawing for 25 bucks at Schrock Innovations, yours to grab. Let's jump into those phones really quick. And Susan is the first caller of the show today. Susan, how can I help you today on Compute This? Oh, wait, hold on. He's got to push a button. He's got to put a guy on hold here real quick. New caller at 724.51. You're going on hold. And Susan, you're the next caller of the program. How can I help you on Compute This today? We have a Schrock modular tablet. We're having trouble with charging because the port is loose. Oh, no. Yes, and it's been that way since we got it, but it's really getting to be a problem now. Can you fix that? Okay, a couple possibilities here. A lot of times the port will feel loose, but it's actually the cord. Um, the, the charging cable has two little prongs on it that kind of stick up a little bit. You can feel it if you run your thumb over it. If those prongs get pressed down, and this is true of any um, – uh, USB, micro USB connection. If those prongs on the cable get pressed down for some reason or get compressed somehow, the cord will kind of fall out or wobble out really easily. Um, so, there's, so number one, yes, we can fix the cord, obviously. And number two is we can also fix the, 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 the port on the main board to make sure that the cord, if it's wiggling on the, on the circuit board, yeah, that's really bad and we can fix, we can fix either one. Um, but the thing is, it might be something that we can just fix really, really quickly with, a t with one of those tiny screwdrivers that the shop steals from me. Uh, we can just pull those little tabs back out on the cord for you if that's what's going on. So if there's any possibility that you can swing the tablet and the charging cord into the service center, um, we'll see if we can fix it for you really quick. And if we can't, if we have to check it in, we'll check it in for you. Uh, and then we'll take a look at it and see if we can't get it all fixed up. Okay, thank you very much. All right, hey, now, thank you. And, and what, is, what is your email address again, please? Sure, the email address is Thor, T-H-O-R, at SchrockInnovations.com. And make sure you spell Schrock, S-C-H-R-O-C-K. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, hey, thank you for the call, Susan. And see, guys, it's that easy. Susan is now in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. She asked a couple questions. She got a little help, you know. She's going to take a look at that cord, and then she's going to bring it into the service center, and then we're going to pull – it's the tabs. We're going to pop those tabs back up a little bit. And all, if you've ever had a cord for your Android phone and the cord seems to just fall out of the bottom of the phone, that's what's going on. It, it's not your phone because I had that happen to me, and I thought – and it just so happened that I noticed it right after I took my phone to a, a phone repair shop. And so then I got it back. I'm like, hey, the cord wasn't falling out before, man. 
And then they're like, oh, we didn't do anything to that. And then I'm thinking, I don't want to be that guy. You know, we have that happen in the shop sometimes. Like, this wasn't doing this before I brought it into you. And in the back, we're like, we didn't, it's like, we didn't even touch that. We, you didn't even bring in the adapter. And how would we do anything to your adapter? You must have done something. It wasn't doing this before. So I don't want to be that guy. And then sure enough, I'm glad I wasn't that guy because it was my cord in the first place. It wasn't anything they did to my phone. It was my cord. Uh, so I replaced the cord and then got it going. Because sometimes you can't pull the tabs out. Sometimes you have to just replace the cord. But that's why I wanted to bring it in. So that way we can test other cords. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Email for T-H-O-R at com. Craig, you're next up on the program. How can I help you uncompute this? Yeah, hey, good morning, sir. And uh, real quick, I want to say we're blessed in Omaha to have you as a business. Well, thank you. And great radio show. You are a five-star top tour, man. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, uh, I'm not your expert opinion on this uh, I think it's the mark of the devil, but this company in Sweden, uh -huh. uh, you know how sometimes companies, you have to have a security card, you know, to gain access to stuff, hanging around your neck, yep. you know, to get into places. Well, the Swedish company is offering their employees to have a chip installed in their body. Oh, convenient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sick. Sick. This is, man. And I think that's going to be the future, you know, with everybody, you know, wanting to move on with technology. I think I think it's going to go viral and everywhere. Yeah. No, I, and I, you know, thank you very much for the call, Craig. You know, sure. the, uh, I, I hear your concerns on that stuff. You know, the, it's a tough situation. It's a tough thing when you think about it. So obviously implanting a door access code near field communication chip in your body is probably the most stupid thing a person could do in the world. Like, what if you quit? How do you turn your card back in? Like, that's like the biggest barrier to exit ever, right? I'm, I quit. And then the boss is like, all right. And he pulls out the knives, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe I was a little rash. Hold on. I, I don't need the raise. Just don't cut me, sir. You know, I need to get my security chip back out of you. You know, that, that's stupid. But on the other hand, when you have a situation like uh, – Let's say, you know, I'm wearing my Galaxy S3 watch, and it just vibrated. I got a text message, and I was able to look at it, check it without grabbing my phone. I've got, you know, my, my phone here that I carry on me pretty much everywhere I go. I used to be all paranoid and turn off all the GPS notifications until every app on the planet required GPS for something. And now I have to leave it on if I want to get weather, if I want to get other stuff. It has to have GPS. So now Google literally knows everywhere I am. And because Facebook is just, like, creepy and stuff, went out and saw The Circle the other day, too. Good, pretty decent movie. Weird. I heard the book is better, but the movie wasn't bad. Um, but uh, The Circle is the, the movie about uh, the, the social media company. It's supposed to be, like, a kind of a, uh, a combination of all the social media companies together in their most uh, egregious form. Like, you know... Knowledge is good, but knowing everything is better. You know, that kind of thing. Knowing everything about you is better. And like, oh, look at her. She went transparent. She's sharing her entire life online. She wears a camera. Everything that she sees in here is we see in here. Yay. And she's incredibly popular online, but she has absolutely no private thoughts whatsoever because she has no time to herself. And she's cool with that. You know, she's cool giving that away. So the, the thing that's concerning to me is from a technology perspective. Going from on my wrist to in my wrist is a very small jump to me. I mean, the biggest questions I would have about technology you were going to implant in my body is, number one, how do I get it out when it's outdated? Because you know six months from now, come on, you know, everything is chip on board, right? Chip on board in my wrist. And yeah, oh no, my, my chip on board device has failed and now I can't get it out. I have to cut it out of my wrist. They're going to have to find a really simple, super easy way to get things in and out of your, your body. You know, it's kind of weird. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, oh, good morning, Loanne from Michigan. Appreciate you joining us. Love listening to the show. What are your thoughts on the product PC mover? All right, we'll take a look at that one. We'll take a look at PC Mover here, Stephanie, in just a second. Thanks for the Facebook questions. So when you're when you're talking about chips, and we got to take a break, but one of the things I want to that I want to get into a little bit is it may not be so bad. And I know that's a very contrary view from what a lot of you probably have, but when you think about it, an implanted device could literally charge off your own body's energy 
would never have to charge it. Um, an implanted device, I dropped my phone on the way into the studio this morning, literally dropped it from like chest height because I was getting out of the truck. So I, you know, I carry my phone up here all the time. But I dropped it and it has a case on it. And I thought, wow, I just had the screen replaced on that. I'm so lucky I have a case on that. No more dropsies, no more phones falling out. And then once you have it in your body, it's just a super short step to like, directly integrating it with your brain, right? I mean, it's a slippery slope. I mean, I, I say that kind of tongue in cheek. You know, I'm not really saying like I want to hook something up to my brain, but think about the convenience that you would have. Or better yet, from an employment perspective, think about the advantage that you would have over your coworkers with technology directly wired to your brain as opposed to them having to, to access their technology through their, their, their beef sticks, their fingers. You know, <laughs> how, 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 how much faster would you be? How much more capable would you be? How much more would you get paid? You know, and then if you had the ability to turn it off and just be a normal person on the weekends, go to work, turn it on, kind of like you go to work, you sit at your desk. You know, back in the day, you'd sit at a desk and you pull out your computer and everything, and hey, you're good to go. You're at work, right? And then when you're not at work, you could go. What if you could do that with tech that was in your body? Or on the weekend, it switched over to being your tech, where you could do what you wanted with it. You know, home management, vacation planning, you know, whatever you wanted to do. There's a, it's really weird when you sit down and think about some of the stuff that we're experiencing right now in technology, the unbelievable advancements and the stuff that our children are going to have at their disposal that's going to be completely natural for them that is going to be so foreign to us but completely natural to them. It'll blow your mind. So that, let's, let's have a little future time. So, yeah, give me some, give me some calls, 402-558-1110. Give me a call and you tell me. Uh, and uh, the, Putting a chip in your body so you can open the front door is stupid, okay? <laughs> we can all agree, I, I think, that that's pretty, especially for your employer's front door. That's stupid. But how many of you would be willing to take, like, advanced smartphone technology and stick that in your body for your own use? You know, not just your employer's use, but for your own use. Would you, would you do it? 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. We'll be back with more right after this. Schrock Innovation's line of modular computers last longer and perform better than those box store one-size-fits-all systems. When it's time to replace your computer, call Schrock at 934-9423 and find out why a modular computer is the last computer you will ever purchase. Every person listening to this broadcast has either experienced data loss or knows someone who has. When you think about it, you have a lot more data stored in many more places than you do. Do this stuff? Would you would you like stick computers in your body? All right, we're so close to cyberpunk sci-fi genre being real. We are, Thomas. It's it's pretty crazy. The some of the stuff that's coming. Um, after Shrock today, Winston. Yeah, I think we will. Why not? Right? I don't I don't have anywhere to be. Uh, we're we're doing brunch this morning, so I don't have to stop for breakfast. So that'll be cool. Uh, let's see. A computer virus would be problematic with direct wiring to your brain. There you go, Thomas. That actually is a really good point. A computer virus, if you were directly wired with technology and you got a virus in your internal chip or whatever, and it's wired to your brain, that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Are you responsible for actions that you take when your brain is hacked? God, this is such a rabbit hole. We're going to lose the rest of the show on this. I mean, it's just, oh my goodness. I'm just, guys, I'm just thinking to myself, it would be really, really cool to, to not have to, <clears throat> excuse me, to not have to wear a watch, to be able just to like turn my wrist over and have my wrist slide up right here. You know, it would be really cool for me to make a phone call, just thinking about who I want to call. And then I can hear the phone call in my head and I can see the person if it's FaceTime in my field of vision through my natural eyeball. I don't have to have like three contact lenses and all this stuff. I just think it would be kind of cool, right? Yeah, and it would be kind of dark too, I suppose. But then think about this. Let's go back and take like a civil a civil war soldier and show him a cell phone. Or a, a, show him a Bluetooth earpiece. And he's gonna think he, he's gonna tell you it's the mark of the devil. He really I mean it's it's bad, or like a pacemaker. How could you implant an electrical device to shock your heart? That's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard, you know. And these are all things like you think, oh wow, back, you know, the Civil War times. You know, there were back in the day, there were people there, there were scientists who said, you know, these these things called germs, they I think that sickness in the body is caused by tiny little parasitic things that we can't see 
that crawl under our skin and make us sick. Do you know how stupid that sounds? <laughs> I think this. I think that the flowers are bloomed by fairies and drop fairy dust from the space. You know, come on, that's stupid, right? Oh my goodness! <clears throat> Can we turn the speakers down up here in here just a little bit? That's right. I feel like I'm shouting and yelling. Like ah! Yeah, it does. All right. Broke a ribbon cable inside a laptop, Keith says. Can you guys fix without charging an arm and a leg? Um, no, Keith. We uh, we require arms and legs. Uh, in fact, we're going to implant things in them. Um, how did you break your ribbon cable inside your laptop? The only ribbon cable would be for the keyboard or the touchpad. Um, there's a cable for the screen, but it's usually not a ribbon. Um, so basically, if it's a screen, it depends on the screen. If it's that screen, we replace the entire screen assembly. We don't we don't screw around with that because it's separate the, the glass. They don't unscrew anymore and just pop out. You have to use heat guns and everything like that. Um, so if, as far as the cost, you're looking at the cost of the whole screen. So it can be an honestly, it can be an arm and a leg. Um, if it is uh, just an internal cable, especially if you have the cable, uh, usually it takes between one and two hours to tear down a laptop and put it back together again. Uh, so you're looking at one to two hours of labor. So if the laptop is is worth five hundred dollars or more, it, I would do the repair. Um, if getting a new one would cost you $500 or so, I would do the repair. If not, then if it's a piece of junk or really old like Vista or XP or something stupid like that, or even an early Windows 7, then I would just let it go. All right. So, yeah. Whew. So, yeah, we'll do some Aftershock today. We only have 17 viewers on Facebook right now. So, I don't know, 17 of you. I don't mean to say you guys aren't worth it, but last week we had 25. You need to tell your friends. So, yeah, do me a favor. Click share. Click the share button on Facebook. Share this with your friends so that they see the video going up, and then we can all uh, we can all get some more viewers on for aftershock later. All right, let's get into this a little bit, guys. We're gonna go back live. Alrighty guys, welcome back into Compute This. My name's Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Ask a question or make a comment, and we'll put you in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. A lot going on on Facebook right now, guys. So if, you, if you're if you not on Facebook Live right now, I was joking with our, our viewers before. They were, we only have 17 viewers on there right now. Last week, we had like 25 at a time, you know. 17, we're down a little bit this morning. You notice the calls are down a little bit, too. We haven't had a whole lot of calls this morning. Um, so basically, guys, if you're online on Facebook, you can pop your Facebook app open or you can just, you know, you're listening to the radio already, you know, whatever you want to do. But uh, you can listen and watch on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Rock Innovations. And if you're on Facebook right now, click that share button for me and tell your friends about the live broadcast. That allows everybody else to get in on it. It helps us out quite a bit. Um, yeah, and it means a lot to us when you do that because it's like you recommending us to your friends, basically. It's the same. It is word of mouth in the in the steam tech punk era. All right, 402-558-1110-800-543-1110. Al, you're next up on the program. Al, how can I help you today on Compute This? I have a tablet, and the other day it came up and said I had a bunch of viruses. Gotcha. What kind of, what's the operating system on your tablet? Is it Android? Android. It's Android? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's a complete lie. <laughs> Basically, what you got is a pop-up screen that pops up and says, oh, you're full of viruses, click here, and they want you to install some app or take some uh -huh. action that's going to yeah. make them money, basically. They're trying to persuade you because they get paid per install. So they're going to throw anything up on the screen that they can that convinces you that your Android device is infected. First of all, if your Android device is, is locked, in other words, if you haven't gone through the process of unlocking it or rooting it, um, it's not infected with anything. Number two, if you did go through the process of rooting it or unlocking it and you've installed apps from an unknown source, it's completely possible your Android device is infected and you should install antivirus software on it, something like Lookout, which is, you know, free. You can get that anywhere. What's the name of it again? Lookout? Lookout, yep. Lookout is cool because what it does is it scans all of your apps, and if there are any apps on your device that are known to have infection you know, components to them, it'll alert you to that. Um, uh -huh. So if you're if you are rooted or unlocked, it, it's kind of like a real time protection. That it, it's a free it's a free app. They have a paid version as well. The paid version has some more advanced functionality, like remotely locating your device if it's lost or stolen, or sounding a siren alarm on it, stuff like that. Okay, well, I, you're using a term I'm not familiar with. Rooted is that what you said? Yes, uh, rooted or unlocked. So when you get a device like a tablet, um, yeah. it is locked down. So whether you have an Apple tablet or an Android tablet. 
it is locked down. In other words, the only way that you can get apps on that tablet are through authorized app providers. On an iPad, the only way you can get apps is through iTunes. That's it. There is no other. You can't do it. On an Android device, there you know there's the Google Play Store, yep. and the, you can actually in settings you can turn on install apps from unauthorized sources, and then you can get apps from Amazon and stuff like that as well. Uh, by the way, if you guys, if you or your kids or your grandkids are buying app, buying in-game purchases in apps, you know how they get the free app and they play the game and then they hit a brick wall where you have to buy something. If they're buying stuff, if you install the app through the Amazon store, you can actually buy these Amazon virtual coins, and it gets you the in-game purchases at like a 20% discount. So if you're buying, if you're if you're hooked on Candy Crush and you're buying all the stuff, you should install it through Amazon and you can save some money. You can save 20% on your in-game purchases. But nevertheless, you know, if you're rooted or unlocked, that allows you to install what are in essence stolen apps. How so, can I tell if it's been unlocked? I don't think I've done anything like that. You would know if you did. If you unlock your tablet, you can never get updates again for it because if you get an update for it, it'll either brick it or lock it again. So when the new version of Android comes out, you can't install it. Um, uh, yeah, so you, unlock it. I mean, uh, updated about every week or two. So yeah, so I mean, if you unlocked it, you would have either done it yourself, like a very technical process where you hook it up to a computer and you install drivers and you do all this stuff, oh, no. or you would have taken it someplace and paid them fifty to hundred bucks to unlock it. So no, it, you no, would not know. That, not in that part of the country. <laughs> yep, you would know if it was unlocked. All righty. Thank you much, Al. Right. Hey, thank you, Al. Appreciate it. Now, you see, imagine Al's situation if he didn't have to have the tablet. So if you have an implant in your body, would it be locked or unlocked? So, golly, I mean, it's such a rabbit hole because think about that. Think about a company like Google. If they could, rather than make you carry a device or a company like Apple, they could put the device in your body. And the, the, the implant in your body would have technical capabilities that could be updated over the air. I mean, it, it really is. It's kind of scary, and it's kind of exciting because I can see all the benefits. I can see all the good things that come from it. And admittedly, there are some darker sides of things, You know, not the least of which being you know, what happens if you get hacked. You know, <laughs> If you get hacked, then, you know, I mean, think about it now. If, you, if your smartphone gets hacked or your computer gets hacked, it malfunctions, right? So we're not, you're, you're, we're not saying implant something in your body that can control you. What we're saying is import or implant something in your body that feeds you information. So at best, you could get you know, fake news fed directly to your brain, right? Fake news. So it, it could be fake news. You never know. Uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, so I don't know. It's, a, it's an interesting concept. I, I, I like, you know, I don't know. I kind of like it, and it kind of scares me at the same time. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Let's put it this way. If the technology existed... And they said, lay down on the table. You could be the first one. I probably wouldn't lay down first. I'd probably, as we tell you, when the newest, greatest technology comes out, you don't want to be the first one to adopt it. You want to be the second one to adopt, adopt it because the pioneers take the arrows, right? And so you're going to lay me down the table and stick technology in my body that implants into my brain. Let, the, let that guy do it first. <laughs> let him go first. And that, that's that, you know, this has been a, t a tried and true uh, procedure through time you know just think about the snake oil salesman of the of yonder your you know who wants to buy my great snake oil i'll buy four bottles sir well thank you boy come on up here uh, four bottles for you thank you who else wants to buy some of this amazing stuff well i have some left and then at the end you know the kid comes around to the back and gives him the four bottles back and the guy gives him his money back plus a little tip says good job kid you know get get that first sale going all right, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Josh, you're next up on the program. Josh, how can I help you today on Compute This? Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I have, I work with iMovie 6 a lot. I mean, I have a newer MacBook or a newer Apple laptop, but I, I'm working on a project with iMovie 6, um, and I have several older Apple laptops that were maximized to use iMovie 6 once once upon a time. Okay. But the main laptop that I use is a, an older black MacBook. You familiar? Uh-huh, absolutely, Remember yeah. the black ones? It just died. Now I, tr uh, I turn it on, it just shows a question mark. 
and it's got so much stuff on there that I just I back up usually, but there are things on there that I didn't back up. And I'm wondering, is there some way I could bring it in, have you guys figure out what's wrong with it, and bring it back without losing the software I have installed? Gotcha. And, okay. okay, so when you when you turn on the computer, if you're getting like the, the, the sad the sad Mac face, um, what that's basically telling you, or the question mark now, is what they what they do. Back in back in my day, it was a sad face. Uh, but now there's no sad faces on Macs. Everything's happy. But uh, but basically what it's telling you is the operating system can't load. And when the operating system can't load, that has a cascading effect on everything else. You can't run your programs. You can't access your data. All the way around, it's bad news. That doesn't mean the data's gone, though. So first of all, if you brought it into the service center, the first thing we would do is we would open the unit up, take the hard drive out, and then we would test the hard drive on its own. If the hard drive tests good, if it's 100% and it's healthy, what that means is that it was just a software quirk. Something went wrong with the software. We could probably reload the operating system and be good to go. Um, we'd make a backup before we tried just in case something went wrong. The second possibility is that the hard drive is starting to fail. And if that's the case, you don't want to do anything intensive on the hard drive at all until you have a backup because failures get worse with access. So you'll have people whose hard drives start to fail, so they'll try to run a check disk to fix it or a defrag. Oh, gosh, don't do that. But run a defrag to fix it. Defrag doesn't fix anything. It doesn't fix any problems. It never has. It never will. It simply is supposed to improve the access speed of the hard drive. So people are like, oh, my computer was acting kind of funny. I got some blue screen, so I defragged it. And it, it, and it does absolutely nothing. My, my car's got a flat tire, so I uh, took it in and changed the oil, you see. And uh, I think that it's thumping less often now as I drive down the road. It, it did nothing for the tire. So basically, if we brought it into us, we'd take the hard drive out. We'd assess the health of the drive. And then once we had that done, we could take the information either and clone it over to a stable hard drive, which would be the goal, uh, or if the hard drive is healthy, we would you know, make a backup of it just to make sure we had everything, and then we'd try to repair the operating system. So, yeah, either way, we can get that okay. thing up and running again for you. I know it's an older laptop, so you probably don't want to sink, sink a bunch of money into it. Um, I do. So here, here's the thing. Have you ever been into our service center before? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, and actually, I have a bunch of – older Mac things that would run iMovie that I really need to, like, I have a couple laptops where the screen goes out, and I mean, I really have been, like, hoping eventually to find a place where I could get them all up and running. I have one more question. Yeah. I have an old Western digital uh, external hard drive that just stopped working that has some original video on that I never got. You guys familiar with bringing those things back? Uh, Western Digital External Drives. Uh, yeah. well, we have a data recovery lab, so we're familiar with getting data off of them if they don't work. Um, right. Once a hard drive goes bad, you don't want to try to bring it back. So, for example, well, right. sometimes we'll, we'll fix a hard drive for a customer so that we can get the data off of it. Um, but right. then we give them the Is hard drive hard? back. Uh, oh, it, it can be, yeah. Um, we okay. have special equipment for it. So, in other words, if you have a, an external hard drive that when you plug it in, it's not recognizing, especially a Western Digital those right. are all encrypted, so you can't just open the enclosure and take the drive out and hook it up to a computer like you can with a Seagate, for example, uh, uh, because those drives are all encrypted. You have to have the USB circuit board, and a lot of times in an external, if it doesn't even show up when you plug it into a computer, it's not the drive that's bad. It's that little USB board that's bad. But right. with the Western Digital, we, we keep a library of those because we'll just keep switching them until we find the one that has the correct encryption chip, and then we can access your data. Um, so that, that's stuff that we can usually do in the service center. The data recovery starts at about 400 bucks, though. So it, it's yeah. got to be worth it, but you know, we can certainly do that for you in the service center. Hey, awesome. All right. Hey, thank you for the call, Josh. And by the way, also, yeah, you know, I know you've never been in the service center before, but uh, if you're your new customer, which you are, when you come in, make sure you mention that you want the first hour of labor coupon. We call it the new customer coupon or NCC for the cool kids. Make sure you mention the, the NCC and you'll get yourself your first hour of labor free. That new customer coupon is worth 110 bucks. Um, so, Keith, also with uh, I'm looking at Facebook here, you were trying to replace a keyboard in your laptop, um, took the computer apart, and you had a ribbon cable that was damaged. If the ribbon cable is attached to the keyboard, if that's the one that got ripped, then you don't want to replace it. If it was another ribbon cable, for example, like for a power button or something, um, those you can find them online anywhere. Find the part online, bring it into us, it, You know, it, especially if you already have the thing torn apart. I'd, it's not hard to replace those. We can certainly take care of that for you as well. And I don't think you've ever been in before either, Keith, so you'd be a new customer as well. Same thing applies to you. You can uh, use that new customer coupon to save that first hour of labor. 
All right, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Since we're not syndicated yet, I'm dropping the last break because why stop for a break? We got calls. We got cool topics. Life is good. Let's keep on rolling. And Earl, you're next up on the program. Earl, how can I help you uncompute this? Yeah, um, I had a computer that had an admin password on it that I could not figure out. It's an older computer and went to get it wiped off. And when I brought it back home, the second, well, it was the dual monitor. I installed one of those uh, hardwares on it. And it had a dual monitor, and now the second monitor has a blue screen on it. Okay. So I don't know. I called the place back to ask him, like, what it could possibly be. And he told me, well, maybe you didn't um, plug it back in right. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure that's not too difficult to plug it in. If one of those prongs didn't hit or something together right, could it possibly cause a blue screen? Or if it wasn't, like, fully... Um, tightened and would that possibly cause a blue screen because i don't think that would be the issue i'm going to ask you a couple quizzy questions here earl that'll help me figure this out for you are you in omaha or lincoln 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 did you take it to a company that starts with the letter q no okay good all right so so setting back then um first of all when you say it has a blue screen um when you hook it up to the computer when you plug it in when you say a blue screen is it causing this does the other monitor still work can you use the computer yeah, well, both monitors still work. Um, just the second one has like a blue tint. Oh, it. gotcha! It's a, it's a, so it's not, it's like a, it's like a tint or like a, a, a shade. It's a shade of color off. Yes. Okay. So yes, most likely that is a bad cable. Uh, it, I'm gonna guess it's gonna be either a blue VGA cable you're plugging in or a white DVI cable. Probably the blue one, right? Yeah, the blue one. Okay. So your, your blue VGA cable, either one of the connections is loose. In other words, it's not screwed in. I hate screwing them in because, of course, as soon as you screw in, it's kind of like zip ties. As soon as you zip tie any cords down to anything, you immediately have to take it off for some stupid reason. Something goes wrong and you got to unzip tie everything. I hate zip ties. They're super handy and they make you feel so organized, but oh. So it's kind of the same thing. Once you get, you know, if you don't screw it in, of course, once you do screw it in, you'll have to pull the computer out like a quarter inch to do something to it, and you can't because you have no cable give or whatever. But uh, so like a lot of my cords, I just stick them in the back of the computer and just let them sit there so they're not screwed down. In this case, though, we're trying to diagnose what's going on. Try screwing it down. Now, the other thing is you just unhooked everything and hooked everything back up. Chances are you yanked and tugged on that cable a little bit. Are you sure it didn't come loose from the back of the monitor? Um. No, because, yeah, it was pretty much set. Like, under the, under the desk, I had all my cords, yeah, zip-tied to make it look, look a little bit nice. Oh, uh, zip-ties. So. Yeah, I, I hear you. The zip-ties, they, they're so organized, but, oh, the zip-ties. Double-check the back of the monitor just to make sure that we didn't have a, a situation where the cable come, came loose a little bit from the monitor. Make sure it's screwed into both places. Now, if that doesn't work, it's possible. It's not often, but it's possible if you look in the end of your VGA cable, if you have a bent pin or a pin that's bent flat, which is when it was put on, if it was a little out of alignment and you kind of <clears throat> muscled it on there a little bit, um, I've done it before. Everyone everyone who's plugged in a lot of stuff has done it. If that's the case, you could have a bent pin. Uh, if that happens, you might be able to straighten the pin very, very, very slowly and carefully um, with like a little screwdriver, uh, like the ones that you know I can't find anymore. Uh, or you can uh, get a new cable. Now, a replacement cable is not going to be super expensive. It's a VGA cable. We might even have one used in the service center somewhere that we could sell you for like 10 bucks or something. Um, but uh, that'd be the next thing to try would be to, to get that. In fact, you know, if, if you stop by our Lincoln Service Center, call ahead to make sure they have one. Um, but basically, they'll probably sell you one for 10 bucks, I'm guessing. And if it doesn't work, we can give you a refund. It's not a big deal. But that way, at least you can test it and you can diagnose it and find out. Because if it wasn't doing the little the tint before and it's doing it now, that's not a driver issue. That's not a software issue. That's a hardware issue. We see it all the time because the monitors that we have on the walls in the service center, we unplug and plug them in from computers like several times a day. And the, the monitors in the Lincoln Service Center were put on the wall in 2008. So we've replaced the VGA cables multiple times because that's what happens. They go pink or blue or whatever else, and they're tech monitors, and then we put up with it until we can't see it at all anymore, and then all of a sudden we have to replace the cable. Um, so I've seen it before. It's probably a cable. Okay, yeah, because I wanted to make sure. I looked on YouTube, and I heard of this common thing that people talk about. It's called BSOD, Blue Screen of Death. 
Yeah. So this isn't the same thing. No, right? no, no. Blue screen of death, your computer would be completely inoperable. It would come up with a blue screen with white text like an error has been detected. Please wait while we dump the memory. It's okay to restart your computer now. I mean, it would. that's the blue screen of death. Um, so, yeah, it, it, your, your blue screen is like the, the, the blue tint of pain or so. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not death. It's just a bad cable. We just got to get the cable replaced. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I appreciate the call, Earl. All right, last call of the show. Let's jump on to Mike. Mike, how can I help you today on Compute This? Good morning, Thor. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Hey, pretty good. If we're going to talk Mark of the Devil, Mike, you're the guy I should ask. Yep, sure Mike are. is an ordained minister. Mike, if we start putting chips in people, is it the Mark of the Devil? Yes, you can be tracked. And if you read Revelations, you never want to take a chip, a mark of any kind right hand or in your forehead, which could be in your eye, retina scan, or anything. That is the mark of the beast. And you can be controlled by the one world government because they can track your every movement. And that is exactly why I wear my watch on my non-dominant wrist, which is my left hand, Mike. That's you. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much for the call, Mike. I appreciate it. Hey, do we have time to take Gary real quick? Let's jump in. Gary, how, thanks for holding on there. What can I do for you today? You are talking about implanting chips in our bodies. Yep. Uh, we think nothing of implanting chips in our pets. This is true. This is true. Thanks for the call, Gary. We put chips in the pets all the time. It helps us find them when we track them down. So just like Mike said, they can track you. So I don't know. All right. We need to draw a winner. $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Today's winner is Al. Congratulations, Al. You've got yourself $25 from Schrock Innovations. Kathy will get a hold of you on Monday to get you that gift certificate. Stay tuned at Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations for the After the Show show. After Schrock. That's right. I didn't come up with it. It was a listener name, all right? So uh, stay tuned for After Schrock. We're going to come up and do a, just chit-chat a little. You, know, you can ask questions on Facebook. I'll answer them for you. And then we'll be back here again. Uh, there is no Omaha Morning Blend tomorrow. We're preempted for the funeral for the deputy. So, uh, we're going to be no TV tomorrow. Um, I'm trying to think of something fun to do on Facebook instead, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But otherwise, we'll see you again next Sunday for another exciting edition of Compute This. This is Nebraska's news, weather, and traffic station. This is News Radio 1110, KFAB Omaha. From ABC News, I'm Tom Rivers in Paris. It's finally arrived, the historic vote. You can't argue with your fans, you know, you gotta, you gotta go with what they want, you know? All right, good morning to you too, Todd. All right, Keith, the ribbon cable is located between two circuit boards and it's about a millimeter wide. That's a very thin cable. More than likely, that's gonna be like an LED for uh, power, uh, it's going to be a. Um, uh, it's not going to be USB. It's not going to be anything super vital. Uh, it could be something stupid like a power switch. Um, so something like that, uh, Keith. If you, uh, you know, you obviously tear the whole thing apart. So you're right there. If it's something that you think you can put in, um, give me the make and model of the uh, of the computer. I'll see if I can find the part online for you and give you a link. To it. Uh, and we'll see what we can do for you. But you got to stop giving me so much crap on Facebook, then, okay? If I help you out with this, you owe me, man. You owe me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So anybody got questions, comments, anything on Facebook you want to go over this morning that you didn't call in on the show for for some reason? You can type it right in there and hit enter, and uh, then we'll get to see any comments you might have. So, oh, boy, this week in the service center, we do have two. Of the, I didn't talk a whole lot about it on the air because I don't think I really need to. We have two solid-state hard drives left for the ultimate upgrade, and then it'll be done. So, you can keep an eye on the website at schrockinnovations.com. Oh, biscuits. There was something I was supposed to say that I totally forgot about. Um, all right. So I guess this is a Facebook exclusive all of a sudden. Um, you remember the 2016 holiday special, um, the laptops that we just finished doing uh, this last December. We have one more than we were supposed to have. Um, well, put it mildly, we, we tried to double deliver a computer to somebody. And it's been sitting on the pickup shelf forever. And finally, we got a hold of the guy. We let him like 20 voicemails. And he, he calls back. He goes, I know you guys are calling me about my computer's working great. And we're like, oh, my gosh. We actually tried to double deliver this guy a laptop. But I have 
a fully built, ready to rock and roll 2016 holiday special sitting in my Omaha service center. I have one. So the price of it is $14.99. It is brand new in the box. It's never been out. It's just programmed sitting there on the shelf. $14.99. Uh, it is up on our website at schrockinnovations.com under specials. So you can take a look under specials and you can actually buy it right now on the website. So if this is something, if you're thinking about a laptop and you want to get this one, I wouldn't wait. We open today at noon. I wouldn't wait until noon. I would buy it online right now because it probably won't be around at noon, even though I screwed up. There's 25 people watching right now. So one of the 25 of you, if you're looking for a laptop, this is your chance to get it. It's in stock, ready to rock and roll. You can pick it up this afternoon in the Omaha Service Center, but you can take a look at the specs online at schrockinnovations.com. Click on shop and then specials pops up right there. Um, the quick hits, it's got a 500 gig solid state, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory. Um, it's got a 15.6 inch screen, which means you get the, the, the 10 keypad off on the side, which is kind of nice. Um, all that is uh, all together Windows 10. Uh, I'm trying to think backlit keyboard. It has a DVD drive, uh, blah, 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 blah. Touch, uh, multi gesture touchpad. Um, uh, trying to think if there's any other thing I'm missing here. Oh, it's a quick hit off of it. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's, it's the real deal. It's the holiday special. So we have one. If you want to take a look at that, you can pick that up over at the uh, service center. Uh, it's at 168th and Burke, but I wouldn't just drive over there at noon today because it very well could be gone. I would take a look on our website at schrockinnovations.com and make the purchase there if you're going to do that. Hi, Carol from Round Rock. How are you doing? All right. Um, yeah, Jeffrey Jeffrey says, yeah, the, the holiday special laptop is a sweet machine, but it's a little heavy. Boy, you should have seen two years ago. That, that one is actually a half pound lighter than the holiday special from two years ago. Similar specs, but a half pound lighter because the uh, this, this year's holiday special had the uh, seventh generation Intel processor, which was so much more energy efficient than previous gen. They were able to cut the battery in half, and it actually uh, was so much more power efficient. It lasts just as long with half the battery. So that's pretty cool. Right, Winston says, I've got a Netgear Nighthawk I'm getting rid of. Any security concerns I need to know about? Nope, Winston, you're good. The Netgear Nighthawk was a good one. Why are you getting rid of it? Is it shot? I mean, that's a, the Nighthawks were good routers. Um, but uh, no, there's no security concerns or anything on there. Um, you could, if you were, if you really wanted to make sure that it got completely recycled and nobody got a hold of it, you could drop it off at the service center. Uh, we're almost due for a pickup for our recycles. The ultimate upgrade is uh, wrapping up. We're still delivering computers to people. But as they're bringing their trade-ins in, we're starting to get a big pile of used garbage laying around, uh, used computers that are just junk. And our recycle guy comes out of Des Moines, and he come, he waits till we have a truckload, and then he comes with a truck because we got to make it worth his while to drive all the way from Des Moines. So we need probably about 50% more than we have now. But once we do, he'll come. We can throw that in the mix, and he'll recycle it for us and, and get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, so you can drop it off anytime. Uh, Leslie, how can I get rid of the bookmarks that I have on my Mac that I thought I wanted, but I don't really need? Oh, you would ask me a Mac question. So here's the thing. If I have a deficiency anywhere, it's in, it's in Apple products because I don't use them periodically. I use them from time to time for data recovery on Macs. I'll use them a lot. Um, so basically on a PC, you just right click on them and click delete. I did this with my bookmarks the other day. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, on a Mac, it might be a little bit more difficult than that. You might be able to drag them to the trash can. Try that. Uh, otherwise, uh, what I will do is, uh, if anyone listening right now knows is on a Mac right now and can just do a test real quick and check that out. I don't have a Mac in front of me. Um, do that. Otherwise, uh, what I can do is shoot me an email, Thor at schrockinnovations.com, just so I don't forget. And then when I get into the service center tomorrow morning, I'll be in front of a Mac and I can I can do it real quick and write you up a little uh, instructional for it. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Going back to my earlier comment, your thoughts on PC. Oh, I am so sorry, Stephanie. I forgot about that. Let me. I've never heard of PC Mover, so let me try to pick it up. PC Mover software. Let's see what we got here. PC Mover. Laptop. To, oh, it's a transfer program. That makes sense. Okay. So basically, uh, transfer programs, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, this particular one has a two-star review on Walmart.com, though. Um, so let me see if I can get an Amazon review on it. Because they're I don't know about a Walmart review, but let's try an Amazon review. Let's see if we can get it there. PC Mover software. It's got a three-star review on Amazon. And let's see what, what people liked or didn't like about it. Um, you can get it a little bit cheaper on Amazon. I think it's $39.99 at Walmart. It's $39.12 on Amazon with prime shipping. Um, but if we go here, 
Let's see. The best review says the product does exactly what it's promised to do, but that was in 2013. Um, in 2014, the worst review was how awful can it get? You have no idea. I used PC Mover several years ago successfully, if somewhat painfully, to transfer the contents of my laptop to another. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a one time use program, apparently. Ouch. So you get one transfer for that price, just keep in mind. Um, so I purchased the product again to transfer another one from XP to Windows 7 after eight hours of effort and an extended, awful, demeaning telephone conversation with an India based tech support iYogi representative. Um, I realized the program was never, ever going to work. I'll never use a product again. Um, let me sort this by the most recent review. Apparently, no one's really bought this recently. Uh, there's one from 2016. From February of 16, one star, beware the product does not work as advertised and there is no useful support. From January of 16, no good in desperation. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like PC Mover used to be good back in the day. It used to do what it was said to do, but then when the conversion to Windows 7 happened, um, it, it doesn't work as well anymore, and there is no support. Uh, iYogi is a third-party tech support company that uh, basically is hired out to do support, and they try to upsell you stuff on the support call. Um, so I guess, you know, I there's lots of these programs out there. If you want to move stuff from one computer to the other, there's tons of, tons of programs that do it. The thing to remember is you can't move programs from one computer to another. You can only move data. So realistically, if you want to move your stuff over, you should be able to do it with a flash drive uh, or an external hard drive. You could do it manually. Or we do have a data transfer service at Shrock. You can bring in both computers and we can do a data transfer for you. It's a flat rate service. So we don't charge more for bigger hard drives. It doesn't matter how much data you have. It's the same price. If you have three computers and you want to move them all to one computer, one data transfer price, we can get it all done for you. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Okay, Skylark processor ought to book out seventh generation. Okay, uh, can we edit bookmarks? You can edit bookmarks and delete them, but the problem is if iCloud is active, it puts them back. Ah, I'm having this done in the iCloud account. That's a whole nother ball game. Okay, that one, I'm gonna grab one of the boys on at the shop because uh, I uh, I don't actually, I, I have a Mac. My wife used, used a Mac for a brief period of time. I use a Mac when I'm making a little video or something, but I don't have it hooked up to iCloud and any of that garbage. So I've got a, my wife, the lovely Kimberly, does that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask her about that when I get her uh, when I get her on the line next. So shoot me an email, Thor, T-H-O-R, at schrockinnovations.com, S-C-H-R-O-C-K, and I will go ahead and, uh, and look into that for you and get you a solid answer back and bounce you an email on that one. So that way I'm not looking like an idiot. I'm supposed to know everything, right? Nobody knows everything. All right. Micro SD card. Nick says, micro SD card is corrupted in his phone. He tried a disk bigger type app, nothing. Likely you guys can extract the photos. Very possible. Um, I have actually, we just got a micro SD card in for data recovery in the service center. <coughs> this happened. I got a cough today for some reason. And I keep pushing the cough button, but that doesn't work <laughs> on Facebook. There is no cough button. So you're just going to have to listen to me cough. Um, so basically, there's two components to any memory chip or flash drive. Um, there's the memory storage chip and the controller chip. If the controller chip is bad, the memory chips are fine, that your data is okay, we just can't get to it. If the memory chips are bad, the data is damaged and we can get to it, but we can't get enough of it. So what we would do in this case is we would hook up your card to uh, one of our data recovery imagers. And the data recovery imager is, pretty, is a nifty little machine that we have in our lab that goes through a hard drive or in this case, a memory card goes through really fast and gets everything you can get really fast. Then it tries all kinds of different methods of accessing the card uh, and eventually just beats the living hell out of it, uh, trying to get the data off the card uh, until the card either dies or it gets everything it can get and then it's game over. But a lot of times we're able to get, you know, maybe there's a few files we can't get, but we can get the majority of stuff. So the good news is, is if you have a drive or something like that that you want to try to recover, it doesn't cost you anything to bring it into the data recovery lab and have us try. So we can go ahead and try to recover it for you. If it's successful, great. If not, there's no charge. So it doesn't hurt to try. Drop it off. Uh, the data recovery lab is in the Omaha Service Center. So for fastest results, drop it off there. Uh, otherwise, you can drop it off in Papillion or Lincoln, and we do multiple runs during the week between the service centers, and we'll get it to Omaha for you. So uh, there you go, Nick. Give that a shot. All right. Fabulous answers. Thank you, Stephanie. I felt really bad about the Mac answer because it, it wasn't really an answer. I I have a hole in my knowledge. Maybe I should go buy a Mac. But then I'll have a hole in my Windows 10 knowledge, wouldn't I? 
or have you guys heard about Windows 10 S? Oh my goodness, they're coming out with a new version of Windows called Windows 10 S for the new Surface laptop or Surface tablets. Excuse me. And it's you can only run apps on it. So it's like it looks like Windows 10, it feels like Windows 10, but you can only run apps. You can't run programs on it. Yeah. It's it's stupid, but it's cheap, right? So you can get a really cheap Surface book basically with Windows 10 S on it. And you think, oh, it's Windows 10, right? Windows 10, Windows 10 S, iPhone, iPhone 6 S, whatever, you know, S is for speed. iPhone C, C is for crap. You know, <laughs> C is for plastic. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, watch out for Windows 10 S. I have the jury's out on that one. I haven't actually used it yet. So as soon as I get a chance to get my hands on one and use it, I'll give you a review. But my initial gut reaction is this might be the second coming of Windows RT. We don't want to go there. All right. No, stay part of the PC Master Race. Ooh, Master. You gotta be careful with things like Master Race, Thomas. You know, geez, Master Race. All right, no problem, Nick. Glad I could help. Uh, they didn't try that already. Try what already? I don't understand, Russell. They didn't try what already. This is the this is the bad part about uh, commenting, like speech to text. It's it's chatting, but I'm not typing. It's kind of fun. Uh, and there's like a 10 second time delay when I talk. So like I'm sitting here waiting for the comment to refresh. Waiting. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have to get going. Oh, with Windows RT. Oh, yes, they did. Thank you, Russell. Yeah, Windows RT. Uh, that's why I said it could be the second coming of Windows RT. What Windows RT was is they had um, Windows 7 tablets, basically. And the new Windows RT, which was supposed to be uh, a version of Windows that would run on ARM-based processors. So ARM-based processors are the really cheap processors that you find in like phones and stuff like that. They wanted to get Windows to run on, on a standard ARM processor, so they were going to fork Windows. This part was going to be for regular PCs and other you know normal devices, and this fork was going to be for phones and tablets and things like that. Well, what ended up happening is the chips in the phones and the tablets are not powerful enough to run Windows. Period. The ARM chips weren't powerful enough. It ran like dog poo. So they just kind of very quietly retired this one and it went away. And they stayed with the regular version of Windows. Like if you have a Schrock modular tablet, you have an Intel processor in there. That's the same Intel processor you actually get in some laptops. So it's the same train. And it works great there. It's not so much on RT. So here, we, instead of forking Windows and saying we're going to make two versions of, of Windows, they're actually making a separate operating system just for tablets, Windows 10 S. And if they turn around then and try to start putting that on cheaper processors, that's the second coming of Windows RT. So, all right. Last call for questions, guys. I'm going to have to get rolling here. So if you got one, you can you can post it. I'll give you the uh, the time delay. Ironically enough, we actually have more viewers for the Aftershock than we do for the real show. Is that because they know, like, the FCC doesn't police the Internet and I can kind of say what I want? <laughs> All right. Favorite saying, this is something you have to work into your language today at some point. Uh, my daughter was kind of, I have a little cough because everyone in my house is sick and I'm fighting it off. And I can't go down. Entrepreneurs can't get sick. But I was watching Toy Story 2 with my daughter. So I had her. She had her snot coming out of her face and was holding her and making sure she's okay, you know, watching Toy Story 2. And Jessie, the little uh, the little cowgirl uh, character from that, pops up, and she pops out of a box, and she says, "Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln." And I, I told my wife I was going to work that into the show today. I was going I, I forgot I was going to say, "Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln." So you work that into your sometime today, somebody, when something happens, just look at it and say, "Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln," and then see if anybody laughs. I thought it was pretty funny. I laughed. We both laughed. We're like kind of Disney nerds, so I laughed. I was like, "Oh my gosh, sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln." He seems to think you had to be there to think it's funny, but whatever. All right. I still wonder about, Carolyn says, I still wonder about losing Chrome. Is it the updating? Well, you shouldn't lose Chrome on anything right now. The only thing that Chrome has been lost on is everything from Windows Vista back. Um, so Chrome won't run on Vista anymore at all. Um, so I'm not sure, Carolyn, where you lost Chrome, but it sounds like you've, it sounds like something you've accepted already. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're going to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, you also, uh, Carolyn Dillon will be in the Papillion Service Center today. So also, if you have questions about Chrome, we can help you out with that a little bit. Otherwise, feel free to comment here and I can pop back and comment to you. So remember, sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln. That's the, the, the key phrase of the day. It's the phrase that pays. And uh, we'll be back again next Sunday with another edition of Compute This. 
and an aftershock. Also, if you have any ideas, if there's anything behind the scenes of Shrock that you want to see, um, anything like the Data Recovery Lab, anything that I see this stuff every day, so it's not cool to me anymore, you know, because it's normal. If there's anything you want to see, I have no uh, video component for Monday because uh, we're going to we're we're being preempted on the morning blend. So I've got no segment for TV. So I thought maybe I could do some fun little Facebook live thing or something. But uh, but I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. So if you have any ideas, if there's anything at Shrock you want to see behind the scenes, maybe uh, maybe I could do like a, a walk around and like this is the Shrock Interactive team. Look at look at this guy's completely uncomfortable. Hi, Alfonso. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, say something in Spanish. Come on, do it. You know you want to. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me know if there's something you want to see and I'll see if I can't make it happen on Facebook Live tomorrow. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, they keep updating it and then it works again. Well, that's good, Carolyn. They should update it and it works again. I didn't know it was not working, but as long as it's getting updated and it's working, I think we're good. So if you continue to have problems, let me know, and we'll see you again next Sunday for another edition, guys. Have a great afternoon. to peek out it.